Welcome to Cyberpunk 2077. Welcome to Blade Runner 2049. First off, we got text. This movie's gonna make me read. Oh. Okay, I'll break it down. So there's this company called Tyrell that made human replicants to serve humans, but the replicants got pissed off and I'll revolted against the humans, and Tyrell went bankrupt, and the world went to shit in 2020. I really like how a handful of movies predicted that everything would go tits up for the world in 2020. A little while later, some company called Wallace Company came over and bought Tyrell of Modest Remains and made some newer models that actually obey humans and sent the newer models to kill older models that don't obey humans and called them Blade Runners, okay? The movie starts with an eye shot in California. <laughs> Flying car, Ryan Gosling, and he's a Blade Runner. He rolls up on this old messed up farm where Drax lives, farming fucking bugs, and Drax goes into his house sees Ryan Gosling there puts on these tiny ass glasses man his head is massive Ryan's like I'm sorry it had to be me see Drax is one of the older models and Ryan's here to bust a cap in his ass but Drax thrunk crunk and he bangs the shit out of him not sexual he bangs the shit out of him through a wall they fight it out a bit and Ryan gets stabbed and scans his barcode in Big Head's eye then Batista goes you newer models are all shit munchers you've never seen a miracle then Ryan puts Big Boy down rips his eye out scans it in his car and his boss has him to get back but he's like just a second and sees this flower on this dead tree and gets his drone to scan it it finds a box underneath the ground and holds like I'll send a team over and I'll come back bitch and he flies back to the large ass penis department where he gets his baseline test where someone goes have you ever been in an institution. Cells, cells. Do they keep you in cells? Cells. How hot is Emma Stone? Very, very. What's it like to hold a child in your arms? Interlinked, interlinked. Do you have hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids. Say my ass fat regardless three times. My ass fat regardless. I think this is my a test to see his vitals and blood pressure to see if he's lying and still beaten and shit. And he passes that test and makes his way over to his house and I should see that a hundred years later the Beatle is still alive. People call him names like Skin Job, which is like the N-word of this movie. Wait, so does that mean that Skinner is the hard R? I'm just curious. Anyway, he cleans up and super heals his wounds because future technology and starts conversing with his girlfriend or something and for the longest time we can't see her which makes me think that she is some sort of computer program a robot thing and she turns out to be a hologram fucking called it she also made by this Wallace company and he got her this mini hologram thing that's made with a bunch more movie signs that will finally allow her to leave this house that she's fucking bound to with him first place they go to is the roof and they try to have a touching moment in the rain well as touching as touching can be he can't physically interact with her the bitch is made of fucking photons but right in the middle of sexy time she freezes because his boss sends him a message and cock blocks him what a bitch can a man kiss his hologram girlfriend in peace she me naked people winds at the lap and it's for Forensic lab or something. They got the box out of the ground and got some skeletal remains in it of a female, and they think that Drax killed her and buried her. But actually, it turns out that she was pregnant and died in childbirth, and they had to do an emergency C section, and there are scars on her bones and shit. And they keep zooming in on the scar with this super zoom, infinite zoom CSI lens that just keeps going. Then, after a while of zooming, they stop, and Ryan's like, mm, Let's zoom in some more. And he goes down to the fucking molecular level zoom or some shit and finds a replica model number. And I thought model numbers were just on the eye or other specific parts of the body, not just down to fucking DNA level. Like, he found a model number inside the Scar. Does that mean it's everywhere? You tell me if I zoom in hard enough on a replica's micro penis, I'll find a barcode? Doesn't matter, my dom's like. <sighs> pregnant replicant this is bad no one can notice and she tells him to erase all traces of this case even the child the miracle child has been born by a fucking replicant and he's like dang i never killed anything that was born before it's like it has a soul don't worry you've been getting on fine with that one hurtful much you fucking cum dumpster then we cut to casual product placement ryan flying around over some mongolian throat scene and goes over to what i think is wallace headquarters corporation on earth i can't tell because someone thought it was a good idea to put dark red on a dark background jeez take a fucking design course for fuck's sake and what does the inside of this building look like shit fucking Clogged up urinal, bro. What the f- Whatever. Ryan gives this neo-Nazi a sample of the dead replicant's hair to find info about her in the old Tyrell files. Turns out she's pre-blackout, which means pre-2020, and her information that far back is thick milky. I liked it. I'ma use it. Nazi takes to see if they have any information about her, but not much, and Wallace's replicant assistant, Love, comes over to take him deeper into the belly of the beast that is data storage, and they find an old recording of Rachel, the dead replicant, getting interviewed by this officer dude called Officer Dickhead, and Ryan senses some flirtation blistation in the interview, so he goes over to Officer Dickhead's old partner, Mexican KFC guy. I'm very original with my naming as you can tell and ryan finds out the officer dickhead was a replicant and he is quote unquote retired which according to this movie can mean anything from fucking dead to fucking hiding then we cut back to the wallace urinal building love walking around to meet mr wallace himself who's okay i'm i'm sorry this this is literally what the inside of a urinal looks like this is not water this is pee who designs this crap so she tells him that the new model is ready to be reviewed by him just like he asked and we find out who wallace is it's a very cryptic pedantic and blind jared elmetto then a nude woman drops out of a sack of mucus and jared yucky iwis around her a bit then wants to take a proper look at her so Love connects his chip to his brain which allows him to see with these flying drones I guess. Wait, he wasn't wearing that shit in the pee room he was in? I get it, blind folk can really memorize their surroundings and walk around normally, but do you see those walkway steps he had? Isn't he even a little bit afraid of stepping in all that piss he has laying around? Whatever, we get a close up of ass and titties. Titties! I'm a child. Wallace stabs a naked bitch and makes out with her while saying, I cannot breed them, so help me I've tried. We need more replicants, more than ever before. Millions, so we can be trillions more. I could storm Eden and retake her. What the fuck does that mean? 
I mean, I get it. Dope, he wants to breed more replicants, not manufacture them. I mean, he doesn't have the tech to build a fertile replicant. Okay, but what the fuck does this arcane Eden crap mean, you ambiguous cunt? Doesn't matter. So Tyrell perfected procreation, then the tech was lost to the ages, and now Wallace wants this miracle baby to dissect it and see how it makes it tick, how to make fucking babies using replicants and shit, okay? Cut to the bustling city center. Ryan looking at some pictures of a dead tree. Then this lady in black comes over and tells these hookers in front of the space age brothel to go find out what he knows. And they go over there like, Oi, fancy a toss job, mate. No thanks, I already have a hologram hooker. Then he goes over to Batista's house to make more investigation. And inside a malfunctioning piano, he finds a box with a baby sock and a baby picture in it. And at the tree, he finds a bunch of numbers etched into the bottom of it, which triggers a flashback memory. And he freaks out. And it's crazy to think that the cops who came up and sealed this place up didn't do any proper search at all to find these pictures in the fucking piano. Or even look at this fucking number at the bottom of the tree that wasn't even hidden with some dirt. Like, it's bare. It's visible. You can see all he did was swipe some fucking gravel and he found it. Man, the LAPD blows at this forensic detective shit. Anyway, he lights everything on fire to get rid of the evidence. Meanwhile, Love broke into the LAPD to steal all the bones of Rachel and kills this forensic bald idiot. Now, you know what's even crazier? That Madam Wunsch, police officer, boss person, this dude, okay, didn't immediately get rid of the bones as soon as she gave the order to erase all evidence of the shit. What an absolute cumloid. Anyway, she shows up at Ryan's house like, forensic dude's dead and the bones are gone. We're fucked, Ryan. We're fucked. And he shows her what he found, but she's still in happen and starts drinking. And replicants had all these childhood memories put in their brain to make him more human and shit. And all these memories are fake. And she asks him to share one of these memories with her, although they're fake. And he shares this memory of him running away from a group of bitch ass bully boys trying to take away his wooden toy horse from him. So he hides it in this old dark furnace and the kids find him and he has the shit kicked out of him. Why is he the only one with hair? Is it because he's the anime main character and he has to stand out? Don't matter. Small talk's over. She finishes the drinks and fucks off. Ryan goes to look through the DNA data info, whatever, of kids born on 6, 10, 21. <laughs> The number he found etched into the bottom of the tree and he turns his girlfriend on, not sexually once again, just a projector thingy. And she knows about the wooden horse story and turns out that the same number is etched into the bottom of the wooden horse and he's like, Bitch, put that away, you finna get me killed. I know you were special. That's just a goddamn coincidence. Now keep your trap shut and let me look at his fucking DNA. And he finds a girl and a boy with the same DNA, which is apparently impossible, and they were both at the same orphanage. The girl died and the boy disappeared. So they make their way over to the orphanage, which is in San Diego, for more investigation. And San Diego right now is basically Wally Land, full of trash. And over there he immediately gets shot at and pseudo EMP'd, then crashed lands. Damn, a Peugeot must have really stepped up their bail quality for the shit cans to survive a landing like that. Anyway, people show up and try to break into his car, but he has ninja skills and fights them off and has standoff with them. Then they get horrible cannon by love, bitch playing GTA 5 online, sitting in her apartment, shitting on people with her modern money. Fucking pathetic. Anywho, she does that to protect Ryan so he can do his job and find the kid for them, but the kid is almost 30 years old by now, right? How does she know that the kid did not stick around near the vicinity, at least, in San Diego and become a shit dwelling peasant like these guys, and she did not just kill the miracle kid? Doesn't matter, Ryan's good and he looks up like, okay, thanks, I guess, then goes over to the orphanage. Boys are bald, girls got hair and they get their grubby little hands all over him and lead him to their caretaker. This asshole that got them doing child labor 24-7, what a fucking cunt. Ryan shows him his badge and he's like, I'm not here to shut you down, I'm just looking for a kid that came through here almost 30 years ago. Nah, dog, I know nothing. I think you do. And he does. It takes him to his office and on the way, Ryan recognizes the place that he was walking through from his memory. Then they get to the office and this hoe looks through the records to find that the records for that whole year have been ripped out of the book. And he's just like, that wasn't me. And he shuffles himself out of the room and Ryan just like leaves him, lets him go. Like, Yo, snap out of it. One of your main leads is just, he just, leave. Ryan, shut up. Ryan, busy thinking. And he goes down to look through that place to find the spot where he hid the horse from his memory. And he finds the furnace. It reaches inside all twitchy like, and he finds the horse with a date on its feet like, load, help me. It's true. I'm the particle son. Oh shit. I'm so fucking screwed. Then at home, fucking Gabriella, like, I know you were special, born, not made, you're a real boy now, Pinocchio, and his name is K because officer number or officer code, whatever, is K-42069, whatever, who cares, some numbers, everybody calls him K, and she's like, you need a real name now, an important one, like Joe. Seriously, Joe? Ever heard of average Joe? Regular Joe? You know how unimportant the name Joe is? Name one important Joe. Shit, I forgot the president. Never mind. He goes to Dr. Anna Staline, and she's a meme maker, sorry, memory maker, I mean, maybe she makes memes, I don't fucking know. She's a memory maker, and apparently she did best in the business and she works sometimes as a contractor for Wallace and she has a compromised immune system so she lives her life behind the glass like Bubble Boy and it's illegal to use real memories and put them in replicants of brains and he's here to check if his memory is indeed real or not so she puts him in the chair and uses a movie science machine to look into his brain and look at his memory and she's like yes someone lived this and he's just like <laughs> And he gets arrested and taken back to base to take the baseline test and he fails it with flying colors and Madame One, she's like, why the fuck you dicking around the upgrade center and why the hell is your baseline so off? So he tells her that he found the miracle child and killed it and maybe that's why he's so off. So she's like, I, I get it and she thanks him for his service and tells him that she's gonna give him 48 hours to get his head straight and come back for another baseline test. If he fails that, then he gets thrown to the chum bucket. After that, he goes home to his holographic sex doll which has brought over a real sex doll for Ryan, aka Joe, aka K, to have actual physical panky wanky time saying that she wants to be real for him. So Light Hooker stands on top of real Hulk 
Fokker and syncs up her movements with her real Fokker movements and they start having sexy times with Ryan and uh, you know what? Not the weirdest point I've ever seen. Next morning, Teddy's real Hooker puts a pill in his jacket and leaves. I think that's a tracker though. And Hollow Bay didn't see her do it because if she did, she'd have told Ryan, which is fucking unbelievable because basically she's a home surveillance system. But what's even more unbelievable is that the dude has like less than 24 hours left before shit hits the fan for him. All right. And she's like, I'm coming with you, but you have to delete me from the home console so they don't get access to my memories and find out where you're going, all that stuff about the horse and shit. And just put me all on that hologram stick of yours. Honey, I hate to break it to you, but they probably already have backups of you. Haven't heard of cloud storage sugar tits? They're probably already listening in on his life because you were partly designed as a tool for the government to spy on people's lives. And the unbelievable part is the mere fact of her saying this does not immediately mobilize a squadron of Wallace dudes to come over here and fucking arrest this guy. Matter of fact, they should have been here when Ryan came back from the orphanage and she was so sure he was the miracle child. Only when he deletes her off the house system and breaks the antenna thingy does that weren't any reaction from love. You for real right now? You gotta be yanking on my pubes, bro. Come on. Anyway, bitch ass love shows up at Ryan's house, but he gone and she goes over to Madame One at the LAPD. Like, where is he? I don't know, ho. And fuck you for stealing her balls. And FYI, he burned the rest of the evidence and killed and disposed of the miracle child. So she crushes the glass in her hand and goes, you think we can't lie, bitch? You know what? I'll tell Wallace you shot at me first, so I had to kill you. Then do what you gotta do, bro. Do what you gotta do. Holy fuck, my organs. Stabs her and checks Madam's computer for Ryan's location. Turns out he's in Vegas. I think, I don't know maps. And I think they're tracking him because there's a track on his car. If so, uh, he's a retard for using it. Yeah, let's use a fucking police vehicle to escape from the police. That's smart. And fucking dumbass retard. Anyway, dude's in Vegas because he took his horsey to I'm the Captain Now guy to find out where it came from because he can scan it and find out where it came from. He's like, damn, cuz this real wood, you rich nigga. He also says something that it came from a place that used to be very radioactive and apparently there's only one place like that which is Vegas because of a dirty bomb or something like that. So Vegas is very orange, has massive concrete boobs. Can I show this? Hold on, let me contact Lee. Hey, can I show massive concrete boobs without censorship? I don't fucking know, but who cares? It's not like we're ever getting monetized anyway. I'll take that as a yes. So boobs, bees, booby traps, bars, booze, casino, dog, and Han Solo. He wants cheese, grummet, and thinks that Ryan is here to kill him because he's an old model. But Ryan's like, I don't want to hurt you. I just want to ask some questions. Bullshit. And he shoots him. Ryan falls off this place and then trips a wire and explodes, but doesn't die. I get it. He's a super soldier replica dude, but fucker blew up and got shot by one of the same weapons he used to kill Drax with. What the fuck? Anyway, they end up in this hologram theater show and Ryan disarms Han Solo and lets him get a few good licks in to prove to him that he comes in peace. So Han gets convinced and invites him up for a drink. Unless his dog drink whiskey. Wait a fucking second. Doesn't alcohol kill dogs? Are you fucking insane, Harrison? Whatever. Dog lives somehow and turns out that Han is Officer Dickhead, the guy that pumped his seed into Rachel and made the miracle baby and he left it to keep it safe because he didn't want to get dismembered and shit and Ryan's like fuck you dad not really he doesn't say that he actually hangs out a bit but then a squadron of Wallace dudes closes in on their location and blows up Dickhead's old car and kidnaps him while love puts to her on Ryan and we see two classic examples of dumb bitch syndrome first hollow girlfriend comes out her fucking USB stick to stop love and she's like no don't hurt him but love destroys her USB stick killing her forever what's the plan here Gabriella are you gonna fucking persuade her to stop with your words no she fucking killed you okay forever you're gone and now Joe's depresso and second love leaves Ryan no double tap to make sure he's dead bitch you know replicants are a bit like tea at hundreds. Cunt just ran through a fucking granite wall. That's a surefire way to get him to whoop your ass later on in the movie if you ask me. And guess what? Real life hooker finds him because of the GPS pulse she put in his pocket. He's still alive. They take him back to their lair and patch him up a bit. Bleeding Black comes along. A bunch of exposition gets dropped. Basically, they believe that if replicants can have babies, then they're not slaves. And she's the woman in the picture and she popped her right out so they couldn't identify her that easily. They're also building an army for a revolution that the baby will lead. I hope they mean the spiritual leader like Capus Everdeen, not tactical leader or like strategically or anything because that'd be a terrible idea. And she says he led Wallace to so Dickhead and he can't let Dickhead lead him to her because she's the one leading the revolution or whatever. And her plan's gonna get fucked. So he has to kill Dickhead and she goes, Don't worry, Dickhead only wanted his baby to be safe, and she is. Wait, she? What you thought it was you, you sad sack of worthless shit. No, you're nothing. You're a useless piece of micro shit in this existential clusterfuck, you dumb slut. He's not the miracle baby. The miracle baby actually is Dr. Anna, the meme maker. Nice twist, makes sense too. Boy with hair and orphanage is actually girl with hair and orphanage. And the boy with same DNA is actually a decoy, and she gave him the fucking memory. Cut the dickhead at the Wallace toilet, and Wallace wants to know where the baby is, but Dickhead legit has no info. So he brings out a clone of Rachel with a pretty shit hairdo and hopes that it'll help persuade him to cooperate with him. But Dickhead stares at her. That ass goes, her eyes were green. <laughs> Jared could even clone a bitch properly. What a loser. Wait, if he cloned her and she still can't give birth, then how is finding the baby gonna help? Does the kid come with a Windows activation key or something? Don't matter, once we like off world, we have everything we need to make you talk. I think off world means off the grid or something, I'm not too sure though. Then we cut to Ryan talking to some petite hologram pitted porn ad. Hey, what about hologram titties? Are the nipples a different color from the boob? Let me check. Yup. Then they get censored. Really? Yeah. Who came up with these rules, man? I don't fucking know, dude. Love is currently transporting Dickhead off world for some cock and ball torture, but Ryan shows up and shoots down these two escort cars and makes them crash land into the shore of this dam or whatever. Ryan and Love trade a few shots and trade a few blows in hand to hand combat, then she stabs him and gives him a smooch. Trust me, not the weirdest porn of this guy's head, am I right? Huh? Okay, I can see you're busy. She's like, I'm the best one, dives it to save Dickhead because the car's going into the water and he's drowning. Then Ryan shows up again, puts her in the chokehold for the ages. She's never gonna learn how to double tap. Fucking put her down, Ryan. Put that thought down. She drowns and we got the shot of her through the water, although the water is nowhere near still enough for 
to get the shot. Ryan saves Dickhead and he goes like, technically speaking, officially speaking, biologically speaking, all the speakings, you died out there, okay? Okay, great. Now let's go see a daughter. Takes him over to her lab, gives him the horsey and tells him to fuck off. Guy sits down, fizzle out the shit. And the movie ends with Dickhead meeting his daughter. This movie gets 69 bugs out of 70 glitches.